As we stare up into the night sky, the moon has always been an unwavering constant, a kind of beacon of aspiration for humanity. As for NASA, it's a grand and ambitious objective, an objective to take humans back to this familiar celestial neighbor. But the journey is far from simple. The Space Launch System, or SLS, has been the backbone of this lunar venture a rocket system designed by NASA, born from a blend of past triumphs and future promise. But there's some trouble on the horizon. The journey is off course, no pun intended. The SLS is both behind schedule and soaring way past its budget. These immense financial and time hurdles could potentially jeopardize the entire Artemis mission, which is the name of the moon mission to return us back to the lunar surface. By 2025, NASA's spending on the Artemis program is projected to reach a staggering $93 billion. That includes the roughly $24 billion poured into the SLS project thus far, which means we'll be looking for another $70 billion on top of what we've already spent. With its inaugural launch in November of 2022, the SLS utilized four RS-25 engines, many repurposed from retired space shuttles. It may seem like a tribute to past missions, but the legacy tech hasn't provided the cost efficiency that NASA anticipated. Once the existing stock runs out, NASA is going to switch to RS-25E engines, built by Aerojet Rocketdyne, promising to be cheaper and more powerful. Accompanying those engines will be solid rocket boosters built by the aerospace and defense contractor Northrop Grumman. The SLS's genesis was linked to the Constellation program, launched back in 2005 with a similar lunar objective. Yet integrating legacy technologies from the Constellation and Space Shuttle programs into the SLS has proven to be rather challenging. The complexity of meshing old with new has resulted in only 5 of 16 planned engine adaptations actually being completed. Booster contracts, too, have experienced significant scope and cost escalations, delaying the timeline even further. NASA's Inspector General has also spotlighted the detrimental effect of what's called cost-plus contracts, which effectively allows suppliers to augment the budgets with relative ease, as opposed to the usual constraints of a fixed-price contract. And many have pointed out that it's not exactly surprising that when you give defense contractors an unlimited budget, you end up with a $100 billion bill. The report by the Inspector General recommends moving towards a fixed price contract regime, and NASA appears to be on board with the suggestion. But let's rewind a bit, because it actually probably has cost us even more than $100 billion. You see, the Artemis moon mission is a direct descendant of what was called the Constellation Program, which aimed to put humans back on the moon by 2020, and one day reach Mars. When that program was cancelled in 2010, it left behind more than just abandoned blueprints. It left a bill, estimated to be in the tens of billions, to be paid without any actual return on investment. The cancellation of the Constellation program sparked criticism due to the job security the program had provided across the United States. However, the 2010 NASA Authorization Act salvaged what it could, mandating the construction of the SLS and repurposing technology, contracts, and the workforce from Constellation. More recently, private space companies like SpaceX have also been asked to join in on the cause. Their Starship rocket system is another contender to carry astronauts to the moon and beyond. But it too has faced its own fair share of challenges, the most dramatic being its explosive first orbital launch mission. So with all these delays and budget overruns and fiery failures, will the Artemis moon mission stay a dream? Or will humanity once again leave its footprints on the lunar soil? Despite all of these current hurdles, work continues tirelessly at NASA. Teams of brilliant scientists have been recalibrating, repurposing, and rewriting the course of the Artemis moon mission to become more efficient. 
Remember that scathing audit we just discussed? Well, it wasn't just full of criticisms. It also contained a roadmap. It offered eight different recommendations, eight paths towards resolving the current problems. Besides the suggestion to switch to fixed rate contracts, NASA is now going to be doubling down on integrating those legacy technologies and heritage components into the SLS, pushing to complete the remaining 11 engine adaptations in just the next few years. And those issues with the booster contracts are also in their crosshairs. Working closely with Northrop Grumman, NASA aims to get these costs under control without compromising on their five-year schedule. And so, for now at least, the story of Artemis isn't over. It's evolving. It's a story of setbacks and breakthroughs, of trials and triumphs. And hopefully, when all is said and done, we don't only end up with astronauts on the moon, but hopefully with a bill less than a hundred billion.